Good morning, church. Good morning. Come on, you guys can do better than that. Good morning, church. Good morning. You guys ready to praise the Lord? Okay, why don't we stand? This is a day that He has made, and we will rejoice. Why don't you give a joyful noise? I want to share. Um, I was asking God um, earlier in the week about what I could share with you guys this morning, and I just kind of got thinking about, you know, this time of year as we're in December and we're beginning to um, 
celebrate Advent and, and the birth of Christ. And I know so often when we think about Christmas and the birth of Christ, it's rejoice and, and it's happiness and yay, the baby is here. And that is for sure true. But I also got to thinking too about just the humility of Christ and what he actually did when he when God became a man and everything that's involved with that, we think about the suffering of Christ, we think about the cross, but I couldn't help but think about just the suffering that we all have endured and the pain that happens just as you live life. And just thinking about um, God choosing that, to, to just come as a man and, and accept everything that came with that so that he could eventually lead to the cross. And so then the verse that came to mind, um, it's a couple of verses in Philippians chapter 2. I'm going to read these verses. We start in verse 5. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God as a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every name should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He is highly exalted, and I think... You know, what should be ours in Christ Jesus is that same humility. So let's just be obedient this morning as we worship, and let's be humble. He, his is the name that is above every other name, and we get to have it upon our lips. And with that comes power and freedom and peace. So as we just begin to celebrate the Christmas season, let's just... Uh, remember what Jesus really did for us. It's so much more than I think what we what we can imagine. So we just thank you, Lord. Jesus. Praise you, Lord. i 
Jesus for my faith. 
sure there's many people here that have family members that are not where they should be, that maybe have fallen away from their faith. And so I just wanted to take a moment when we were saying that Jesus for my family, I speak the name of Jesus. And just as a church, if you have a loved one, let's just raise our hands. It's in the name of Jesus. God, we surrender our family to you right now in Jesus' name. And just as Jessica read that scripture, that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus, for my family, I speak the name of Jesus. So right now, Father, you know where they are. God, you know their name. God, we bring them to the feet of Jesus and we speak that name, that mighty name. And I declare right now that those family members are free in Jesus' name. That every chain is broken in Jesus' name. And we call them back in the name of Jesus. We call them back by name. In the name of Jesus right now in your heart, just call them back in Jesus' name. Just speak their name. Father, we call those people back. We call those family members back to your family, to your kingdom, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the whole
So God, we just lift you up. We enthrone you upon our praise this morning. Father, we are houses of miracles. Father, the greatest miracle that you ever did is die and raise three days later. You didn't die because we were sinners, but Father, you saw a greater purpose and who we could be in you. So Father, we thank you for this day. This is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Why don't we give a clap for the Lord this morning? You guys can welcome someone.
Good morning and welcome to Living Hope Community Church. We're so glad that you're here joining us for church today. We would love to get you connected. And if you're joining us online, there's a link in the video description below for you to fill out a digital connection card. We want you to know that just because you're online doesn't mean that you're on your own. There's even a host to connect with you and pray with you as you need. But if you're joining us here on location, there's a connection card located in the seat back just in front of you. It looks like this. Just fill out your name, your phone number, and your email. And if you could just drop that off at the white boxes at the back by the tech booth or the black boxes out here in the foyer, one of our incredible staff will connect with you as soon as they can. But those boxes are not only to receive connection cards, they're for our tithes and offerings to God. Offerings are received by God as worship. So let us give worshipfully and cheerfully from a transformed heart and life because of Jesus. You can also e-transfer to give at livinghope-ca.org. Thanks so much for listening. Enjoy the service. Good morning, Living Hope. How are you guys doing today? It's not that cold out, is it? No, not yet. We're into, it's okay. Um, for the, all you um, folks that have Fords and Dodges, I'll, uh, I'll offer tow services and uh, <laughs> boosting. I always got to throw the dig in all the time when it gets cold. Uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Wade Ashworth. I'm one of the leaders here at uh, Living Hope uh, and been here for a while. I'm probably the one the most, and Mike probably puts up with the most at times. <laughs> he has grace for me. Um, but yeah, uh, we've been here, my wife and I, she's the worship pastor here. We've, she's been here. Um, we've been here for about 25 years at Living Hope here, and it's a really great place to be. If you have babies with you, you can free to dismiss. We have a place called Baby Boulevard for the babies. So if you have uh, 24 months and under, you can go upstairs, just up out the doors and just up the stairs. And uh, we have some awesome uh, nursery workers and people there to help you out there. Just a couple of announcements before we get going here um, into the word here. So we have what we have a, a living help called Next Step Lunch. And as people come into church and check us out, um, it's an opportunity for us to come and put, and it's a, it's a lunch for you guys to come and check us out as Living Hope and who we are. And it's an opportunity as well too to see uh, who we are, what our constitution is, what our governments is, what our um, missions are, and the ministries that we have, as well as just to see our building itself. And it's a great opportunity just to say, you know, I've been coming here for a while, and I'd like to get to know, and maybe there's some places I can plug into. This is a great opportunity for you. So today, uh, after church, out at, in the Hope City room, just to the north end of the building, there we'll have a lunch, and then we'll have it's, uh, and just an information uh, session. So uh, you're more than welcome to attend on that there. Uh, a couple things, we got some announcements coming up here. So on December 18th, we will be doing a kids' Christmas concert here at the church as well. We'll be doing our potluck service. And so um, is there more details coming out on that later on, Mike? Yeah, there'll be more details coming out on that. But we'll, in Hope Weekly. So if you don't get Hope Weekly, talk to Lorna. And maybe if you can't find Lorna, talk to Mike. He'll, he'll make sure that you get that. We also, too, so part of that, too, part of our potluck, too, we just ask that if you are going to be staying, bring a side and a salad and a dessert for you and your family to share with. We always end up with lots of food. It's a great opportunity to so stick around, be good. So just that uh, we got some food, uh, and as well, you want to bring, just to bring a side, a salad, and a dessert for your family. On December 24th, we'll be doing a candlelight service here on December 24th at 7 p.m., the next day is the 25th. We will not be having church. That's day for you guys to spend time with your family, go where you need to go with your family. And, but we'll be resuming on January 1st uh, at 10 a.m. We'll be having our, our service in the new year. We'll be having, we'll always kick off the year doing testimonies and just to share with all the goodness of God and what God's doing in people's lives and so on. And that's it. Uh, I'd like to bring up Sean McCollin here. He is going to uh, speak to a, one of our missions that we have.
Morning, church family. <laughs> wow, it's working. <laughs> so we're uh, the mission of the month for December. We're going to extend this uh, and continue to support our Salvation Army here locally. And uh, it was great to have them last month, you know. And they had a barrel at the back there where they were asking for hygiene uh, products of of different types, and of course. There was a handout that was given at the beginning of the month, and so we also have, for this month, we're going to extend that not only to hygiene, but also to food as well. And there's a list, if you want to take a picture of that, we'll try and have another handout next week so that you can have this list, you know, just to remind you of the different articles that you can donate to the Salvation Army. You know, we sang earlier the song, I Speak Jesus. One of the lines in that song is, I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. And, when I th- and the thought that came to my heart was, when Jesus was here on this earth, as Jessica mentioned, you know, he became a man, he dwelt among us. And Jesus fed the multitudes. You can speak the name of Jesus by a simple act of kindness of donating one of those articles into that barrel. Let's surprise the Salvation Army of how many times we might have to get them to come and empty that barrel. It's just a simple act of kindness, and we can speak the name of Jesus over them. I just want to pray for them at this point. Let's just bow our heads. God, we thank you for the Salvation Army, and we thank you for the needs that they meet here in our local community God, we pray for their continued support from this community. We pray for the health of the, for staff and volunteers. Lord, there's so much sickness and disease that's going around, and God, we just pray that your hand of protection would be upon the staff and volunteers, that there'd be good health, that they'd be able to serve in different capacities to those who come with various needs. And God, we pray for compassion for those who come through their doors Lord, may every heart be drawn closer to you through these acts of kindness. And so we just thank you that we have an opportunity to reach out to our community through this mission, the Salvation Army. We just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning. Oh, you can do better than that. Good morning. morning. There. Yeah, there's only one of me, and there's got to be almost 200 of you. You can beat me, I'm sure, even though I have amplification. Yeah. Oh, it's good to be here. It's good good to be in the house of God this morning, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. It's good. Amen. Well... I know some of you are anticipating my jokes, so uh, let's, let's have some jokes, get you smiling. Uh, you know, Pastor Scott used to always say, I like to get people smiling. That way, when I sucker punch them with something from the Word, it, I don't split their lip. So, uh, Did you hear the joke about the airplane? Uh, I won't tell you. It'll probably go over your head. I found a rock yesterday which measured 1,760 yards in length. I guess it's some kind of milestone. Oh, man. One more. <laughs> Good. I got some more groans today. Good. I was, I was hoping for more groans. I was getting too many laughs lately. I had to, I had to go dig deep. Okay. Uh, did you hear the knock-knock joke about the broken pencil? Okay, knock-knock. Broken pencil. Oh, I can't finish the rest. It's pointless. <laughs> oh, yeah. But there's always a point to the sermon, so let's get to the sermon. So last week we talked about the poison of pride and pride is the first and most formidable of sins. 
of the many, many negative aspects of pride. We talked about three last week. Pride kills, pride compares, and pride corrupts. C.S. Lewis says this of pride, according to Christian teachers, the essential vice, the utmost evil is pride. Unchastity, anger, greed, drunkenness, and all that are mere flea bites in comparison. It was through pride that the devil became the devil. Who were those Christian leaders? Augustine, Aquinas, Calvin, Luther, Stott, and many others. In the conclusion of last week's sermon, I mentioned that pride can actually be a warning sign because pride comes before the fall. Pride comes before destruction. So at the point of pride, when you realize that you're proud, when you're exhibiting pride, if you pivot, then you could maybe actually not experience that destruction, that fall. And so we need to, at the point of pride, steer away. We need to have a, a, a course correction, change from our pride. And we ended last week's sermon with a couple of minutes where we were just seeking God's presence and we were asking him, God, is there, is there any pride in me? Is there any way in which I am exhibiting pride? And if so, Lord God, help me to pivot. And if you didn't hear from God in those two minutes, I hope that you heard from God throughout this week, that you were searching for him and you were, you were asking him to, to reveal to you the different areas in which you are proud. And, and finally, I told you that we would talk about in what way we can pivot once we experience or once we recognize that we are proud, how we can pivot away from that destruction, away from that fall, once we realize we're acting in pride. Uh, if you could just stand with me and let's, let's join in prayer as we get into the Word of God this morning. <laughs> Father, we thank you so much for your Word. We thank you, Lord God, that it is life, that you are life. And Lord, that when we are corrected in our pride, Lord, it's not to chastise us, it's to correct us. And that correction is given in such a loving way so that we can be more and more like your son, Jesus. We want to be like your son, Jesus. We really do. And so when we struggle, we thank you, Lord, for your correction. We thank you, Lord God, for making us aware so that we don't experience that destruction. We want to avoid that as much as possible, Lord. So as we talk about the ways we can pivot away from pride today, would you help us to remember them when we need to? In Jesus' name, amen. Please take a seat. Well, in reading the Bible, you can see how pride is a problem for many people in the Bible, including the disciples. The disciples argued about who was the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And then a couple of them, brothers, actually let their mom argue to Jesus for them on their behalf. And, and uh, so she was advocating which, which, bro, which son would sit at Jesus' left hand and which son would sit at Jesus' right hand. And they, they let her argue and, and uh, try to get those positions. Pride affects us all. Pride affects us all. But I love the the actual account where Jesus does talk to them about when they were arguing about who would be the greatest or who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And so let's take a look at that in Luke chapter 9, verse 46. It says, Then his disciples began arguing about which of them was the greatest, but Jesus knew their thoughts. So he brought a little child to them, to his side. Then he said to them, anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me also welcomes my Father who sent me. Whoever is the least among you is the greatest. Matthew concludes it a little differently. Matthew 18, 4 says, so anyone who becomes as humble as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. 
When informed of your pride, whether through friends and family members, whether it's through when you're reading your Bible and your daily devotions, or whether it's the Holy Spirit convicting you in a moment, we need to respond by humbling ourselves. Humility is the cure to the poison of pride. We battle pride by being humble. We battle pride by being humble. Humility is commanded over and over and over and over and over again in Scripture. It is, there are so many verses that we could talk about this morning. I actually just have a select few. They're all fantastic, but I, I chose some of my, uh, of my favorites here for this morning. So if you're writing the references down, uh, stay sharp because there's quite a few references. Uh, there's a lot of Scripture this morning. Because I really want us to see how important humility really is and how important it is to God. It's not really that important in this world. In fact, it's almost seen as a weakness. But I want to encourage you with all of these scripture verses because God values humility. So 2 Chronicles 7.14 says, Then... If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and restore their land. Second Chronicles 12, 7. When the Lord saw their change of heart, he gave this message to Shemaiah. Since the people have humbled themselves, I will not completely destroy them. And, I, and will soon give them some relief. I will not use Shishak to pour out my anger on Jerusalem. Psalm 25, 9. He leads the humble in doing right, teaching them his way. Proverbs 22, 4. True humility and fear of the Lord lead to riches, honor, and a long life. Isaiah 29, 19. The humble will be filled with fresh joy from the Lord. Uh, Isaiah 66, 2, I will bless those who have humble and contrite hearts, who tremble at my word. Daniel 10, 12, then he said, don't be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your request has been heard in heaven. I have come in answer to your prayer. Micah 6, 8, know, O people, the Lord has told you what is good. And this is what he requires of you, to do what is right, to walk, or sorry, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. In Romans 12, 3, because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think of yourself. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves, by the faith God has given you. Humility is contrary to pride. There can be no pride where there is humility. There can be no humility where there is pride. They cannot coexist. They cannot be together. Pride cannot exist when humility is present. Just as pride is the root of all sin, or the first and foremost of all sin, humility is one of the the most important of virtues. In fact, um, John Chrysostom, an early church father, was quoted in saying, humility is the root, mother, nurse, foundation, and bond of all virtue. You know, oftentimes when I, I was looking up quotes on humility and pride, and oftentimes they're mentioned in the very same quote. They're mentioned in the very same quote. Another early church father, Augustine of Hippo, was quoted in saying, It was pride that changed angels into devils. It is humility that makes men as angels. And Anthony Lycion says, Some people would rather die in their pride than live in their humility. Even in Scripture, many times humility and pride are mentioned in the very same verse. So I'm going to go over a, a few of those. 2 Samuel twenty two twenty eight says, You rescue the humble, but your eyes watch the proud and humiliate them. 
Psalm 18, 27, you rescue the humble, but you humiliate the proud. Proverbs 3, 34, the Lord mocks the mockers or the proud, but is gracious to the humble. Proverbs 11, 2, pride leads to disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. And 1 Peter 5, 5, in the same way, you younger men must accept the authority of the elders, and all of you serve each other in humility. For God opposes the proud, but favors the humble. The relationship between humility and pride goes even further than that, though. It's not just about comparing and contrasting characteristics. It goes even beyond that. When we fight for pride, when we're trying to build ourselves up, when we're trying to make ourselves known, as we talked about last week, then we will bring destruction upon ourselves. We will have an impending fall. But when we walk humbly, when we humble ourselves, when we think of ourselves as less than others, God actually lifts us up. When we take a humble position, God wants to raise us up. God elevates us. Humility brings blessings. Humility brings blessings. Proverbs 15, 33 says, The fear of the Lord teaches wisdom. Humility precedes honor. Proverbs 18, 12, Haughtiness or pride goes before destruction. Humility precedes honor. Matthew 23, 12, But those who exalt themselves will be humbled. Those who humble themselves will be exalted. James 4.10, humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up in honor. And 1 Peter 5.6, so humble yourselves under the mighty power of God. And at the right time, at the right time, not your time, at the right time, he will lift you up. Pride causes us to want to be like God. But you know what? We already are. We were made in his image. We already are like him. We're like him in the most important way. We're in his image. And so we don't need to fight for equality with God. That's what, that's what Lucifer tried to do. And look where it got him. Didn't get him very far. And so we need to recognize that what we want, we already have. We already are created in the image of God. And so therefore, we don't need to fight to be equal to God. We're created in his image. As we humble ourselves, we are put in our place. And we need to recognize that only God is God. He alone is the Lord. And there are two ways that we can be humbled. One is as we act in pride... We will experience that impending doom, that that destruction, that fall. We will experience that, and we will be humbled. Problem with that is it's probably going to be embarrassing. It's not going to be convenient. (laughs) It's going to be at a time probably that is very inconvenient. And it's not going to be anything of your choosing. You don't get to choose at all how you're humbled. Uh, God will choose how you are humbled. And uh, I, it will come at a huge cost. It will come at a huge cost. Or, second way to be humbled is, we can humble ourselves. We can choose when we are humbled by humbling ourselves. We can say, okay, I recognize that pride. I need to humble myself now. I need to not act in pride. I need to make a change. I need to pivot. Recognize the pride in my heart and change. But here's the most important thing to remember here. Those two options. We can humble ourselves, or we will be humbled. One of those is going to happen. One of those will happen. A humbling will come to every single one of us. That's evident in Scripture, but if we interpret pride as a warning sign, 
if we recognize our pride and we pivot away, we can actually humble ourselves and avoid the destruction, avoid the fall. So if you're to humble yourself, God will lead you in a rich and satisfying life because with humility comes blessings. If you aren't to humble yourself, God will humble you in his time. A few years ago, I was running out of hobbies. I had a bike, and all of my friends that had motorbikes sold them. So I was riding around by myself, which isn't very much fun for me. That's, some people love that, but uh, I, I don't even want to... Uh, there are a few things that I like to do by myself. Let's put it that way. And uh, riding around town on a motorbike is not one of them. So I decided, well, I got to sell this. I got to get into a different hobby. And so many people in the church, so many of my friends were getting into hunting or were already into hunting. So I decided, well, sure, let's get into hunting. I did that a few years ago. Um, I got a deer and it was fun. Gutting and skinning and butchering the deer was not. But uh, the, the hunting, the actual hunting, going out with friends and uh, the camaraderie, that, that was a lot of fun. So I'll get, I'll get back into that. So I got my hunter safety, got my pal, and I found a gun online uh, used from a guy out of town. So I picked it up, and it had only had like one box of rounds through it, so it, st it still even had stickers on it. So I was real excited to, to shoot this gun, to get it sighted in for myself, and to hopefully get a deer. And so a few years ago, at the end of of summer. That's exactly what we did. We set up some targets, and uh, I was the first to shoot that day. I had the new gun, so everybody let me shoot first. And so I get the clip loaded up. I sight in the target. And of course, um, everyone wanted to sight in their guns, so there was, a, there was a few guys there. And so as we are there, as I'm about to shoot and see if how we, close I am to the target, I squeezed the trigger and I scoped myself so bad I needed stitches. And so you can see I have a scar on my face. So every time I look in the mirror, I'm humbled. Every time I'm in the mirror, I remember I wanted to show off to all those guys. I wanted to impress them with my shooting skills. I wanted to show them I had shot a gun in 10 years, but that's okay. I still got it. Well, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. So that was pretty embarrassing. Humble yourself or be humbled in God's time. And Jesus tells us quite clearly in a parable the exact same thing. He doesn't use the story of a rifle, but uh, he does use a great illustration. Humble yourself or be humbled. Luke 14, verse 7, says this. When Jesus noticed that all who had come to dinner were trying to sit in the seats of honor, next or near to the head of the table, he gave them this advice. When you are invited to a wedding feast... Don't sit in the seat of honor. What if someone who's more distinguished, distinguished than you has also been invited? The host will come and say, give this person your seat. Then you will be embarrassed. And you will have to take whatever seat is left at the foot of the table. Instead, take the lowest place at the foot of the table. Then when your host sees you, he will come and say, friend, we have a better place for you. Then you will be honored in front of all the other guests. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. So clearly, for us to demonstrate humility is important to God. But how? How do we demonstrate humility? Well, uh, it's... I love when God confirms the message, and this morning, as uh, I was reading through my message, 
God was already talking to Jessica, and Jessica shared the scripture that, honestly, that I'm using right now to talk about how we can be humbled. So thank you, Lord, for confirming your word this morning. Humility is completely outlined for us in Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, says this. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourself. So I love this first verse and this next point that we're going to talk about. Uh, In these verses, Paul mentions pride, but he also mentions the opposite action in humility. Don't be selfish. That's the pride aspect. Don't try to impress others. Again, pride. Instead, be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourself. So the first point in pivoting away from pride is think of others as better than yourself. Don't think of yourself as a horrible person. Don't berate yourself and tear yourself down. But when we are acting in pride, generally, we're looking at other people and say, oh, I'm taller than them. Oh, I'm, I'm thinner than them. I'm stronger than them. Those are all male issues because I'm a man. So um, what are some things that you might think when you're looking at somebody else, right? Some different ways that you'd compare yourself and say, oh, I'm better than them. Instead, we should look to their strengths. We should look at the different ways we can compliment them. We can say, yeah, oh, man, I really like your hair today. That is a fantastic shirt that you're wearing. Uh, look at different ways that we can look at them, their strengths, and we can lift them up. We can compliment them. When you're looking at others, when you're looking up at others, it's a naturally humbling place to be. It's a naturally posi- humbling position to be from below, looking up at them. Let's continue reading to find our other humble actions. So verse 4 says, Don't look out only for your own interests. Again, that would be the pride aspect. But take an interest in others too. That's point number two. Take an interest in others. If you're interested in them, if you're interested in what interests them, They'll they'll engage in conversation. They will feel so honored. They will be lifted up. And as you humble yourself, God will lift you up. And you know what? Honestly, you ask questions of a person. You start to, you ask them what they're interested in. You ask them about their life. Most people, most people want to talk about themselves. And so point for you You ask them questions about themselves, and they'll just keep talking about themselves, and they will feel so special, and you are acting in humility. It's a win-win. Third verse, uh, verses 5 through 7, sorry, the third point comes from these verses. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to, Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. So the third point is, give up your privileges. Give them up. Some of us have certain privileges over one another. And you probably don't have divine privileges like Jesus had, but you probably do have some privileges in different spaces and places. And so, give them up. Give up your privileges or share them. Give them up to others to utilize as well. Um, If you you can't bring anyone else along, you can just give them up. Because there is an... I know in my heart, and that's all I can speak of, is when, when I have special privileges, say we're in line to get checked in at the airport... And, uh, and someone comes up to me, a security officer comes up to me and says, uh, excuse me, uh, you're a pastor, right? That's never happened, by the way. 
Uh, you're a pastor. Let me take you right up to security. You don't have to wait in line, pastor. Come on. Let me take you up through security past everybody else, and let's get you through security. Well, I mean, that would be great because no one likes waiting in line. But to have that privilege and to be escorted like that, man, that would puff up my pride. Oh, that would puff up my pride so much. I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm a pastor, and next time, guess what I would do? <clears throat> Could be carrying around my Bible. Uh, I'm, I'm a pastor. Can I bypass the line again? Because I would puff up my pride. I know it would. I just know it. And so give up your privileges. Give up your privileges. Use them to bless others. And uh, point number four comes from verse seven, where we continue with verse seven. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. Our fourth point is serve others. Serve others. The Greek word used here is actually the Greek word doulos, which literally means servant or bond slave. Jesus came to serve us. He served the disciples by washing their feet, which in a modern day context would be similar to going to their homes and scrubbing their toilets. Jesus served the disciples, and he served each and every one of us. If he can humble himself, if he can serve, we can too. One more yet as we look at verse 7 still, continuing, when he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. The fifth point in humility, in pivoting from our pride, is to obey God. Obey God. Because it's humbling sometimes to obey God. Because he says, go and apologize to that person. But I didn't mean what I said, God. Go and apologize to that person. But I, I didn't mean it, though. It takes humility to obey God. You wouldn't really think so because, I mean, he is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. He is the creator of heaven and earth and everything that exists. He existed before time. He is the Alpha and the Omega, and yet we're proud when he tells us to do something. We have to fight our pride when the creator of everything that is asks us to apologize. Obey God. Obey God. If you're continually seeking God's face, if you're hearing from Him, if you are obeying Him, it will be easy to be humble. When you compare who you are with God, when we are in the presence of God, the first thing we should be is humble. When we're in the presence of the Creator, of the Savior, of the Lord. The first thing we should be is humble. And we should be humbled that he's even asking things of us. Whether it is to ask for forgiveness of somebody or whether it is to go up and say something and we get to participate in advancing the kingdom of heaven here on earth. God, it's so humbling that you would choose me to do this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And obey. Humble yourself or be humbled. Think of others as better than yourself. Take an interest in others. Give up your privileges. Serve others and obey God. Can I get the worship team to come back up? Humble yourself or be humbled. You can choose. God gives us that ability. He lets us choose how we want to be humbled, whether it's of our own 
choice and free will and timing or whether we leave it up to him. I mean, you know what? Not everybody gets humbled here on earth. There, are, there is some instances and in some cases where God will wait until the afterlife to humble people. Not everybody will be humbled while, they're, while their heart is beating, while they're walking the, place, the, the face of this planet. But humbling will come. It will come. And I'd much rather see you humble yourself than for you to be humbled. It's always better. It's always better. Let's pray and let's ask God to help us to humble ourselves. Oh, Lord, we thank you so much for the insight in your scripture, in your word. We thank you, Lord God, for these uh, memorable points that we can pivot away from pride, that we can turn away from the fall. We can turn away from the destruction that is imminent. Lord, we don't want to experience that destruction. We don't want to experience that fall. And we thank you, Lord, for making a way. We thank you, Lord, for giving us these reminders in Scripture to humble ourselves and for these action steps to do exactly that. We want to humble ourselves. We want to lift others up. We want to serve others. We want to obey you, Lord. Would you help us each day, throughout each day to do that, Lord? In Jesus' name, amen.
recognize that today that you're not in the family of God, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, then today is your opportunity to do one of the most humbling things, to recognize that you're not perfect, to repent of your sins, of all the mistakes that you've made, all the mistakes you're going to make, to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and then to relinquish control of your life, because that is what lordship is. If you're letting Jesus be Lord of your life, then you're letting him decide. You're letting him decide and take control of your life. We're going to do just that right now in a prayer. And if you have decide to join in and to give your life to Jesus, we want to celebrate that. We want to join in with you and welcome you into the family of God. And so we're going to pray right now and do that. If you would just repeat after me. I thank you, Jesus, that even though I am not perfect, you are. You live the perfect life. You live the sinless life. And you give me the opportunity to accept you as my Lord and as my Savior. And so right now, I receive your sacrifice for my sin. I accept you and serve you as my Lord. Here's my life. Thank you for new life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that for the first time today, I would love to speak with you. Just come and let me know that you've started your journey with Jesus today because I have resources for you to help you as you walk as Jesus walked. We also, every week, love to offer prayer to people. And so, can I get the prayer team come forward? And if you need prayer for absolutely any reason, we want to pray with you. We want to see God glorified in your life. We want to see you get past those hurdles that are hanging you up. And so if you have prayer needs at all, physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, financial, they'd love to pray with you. These lovely ladies up here would love to see God glorified in your life. So we're going to close by inviting you to come forward to receive prayer for absolutely any reason. Don't let pride get you. Be humble. And come and let these ladies serve you. For the rest of us, there's next step lunch to prepare for. If, you are, if you're new to Living Hope, we'd love to see you. I'll be there. I'm having some lunch with you. And I'll be part of the tour and part of giving you some information about what's happening here at Living Hope. And there's cookies and some snacks out there and children to go get. God bless you as you go. Have a great week. She's seen.